Evening YouTube and greetings Angie. I came across your video regarding the apostolic testimony and reliability of our senses a few days ago and that I would offer the grounds as to why I hold to the trustworthiness of the apostolic testimony when it concerns the resurrection of Jesus. So this isn't going to be a video um, that necessarily attempts to convince you to abandon your atheism or agnosticism. I don't know which do you hold to, although that could happen. But rather, this is a video that provides justification for why I think there is solid reasons to differentiate between the two claims that you raise. Now, as background, I wish to acknowledge that I understand that this video that I'm responding to is a part of a larger discussion that you are having um, in regards to why does a person die for a cause or a belief. Um, but for the sake of time, I'm going to address the following question that you raise. Given that both the apostles and abductees of UFO encounters allegedly experienced said phenomena, given that, what criteria does a Christian use to judge the apostolic testimony true and UFO sightings false? Now, this is what I took to be the central issue of your video, so I hope that's accurate. So I'm, I'm more interested in dialoguing with you, not straw manning you, so please, I hope that's accurate. Now, as formulated, I think this is a great question, but I found myself getting quite distracted by several rabbit trails that you tarried off on during your formation of this central theme. And unfortunately, these rabbit trails do not contribute to the central theme of your video, but rather confuse it, unfortunately. For example, while you held my attention when you stated that merely stating the apostles are more credible than UFO abductees is not convincing, and not a convincing argument to which I agreed, that would be begging the question. You lost me when you stated that talking about delusive experience and the fallibility of our sense experience and memory contributes to this discussion. I'll paraphrase you a little bit. You say such things as, we're not perfect at telling reality, that's why we have science. Um, I'm, not perfect. I'm not a perfect therm thermometer. Um, we all can remember things wrong. The apostles are no different, etc. between 224 and 323. Um, I don't see how the fallibility of our sense experience and memory contributes to the distinction that you're asking about. While I agree that our senses and uh, memory are indeed fallible at times, that in no way establishes a criteria of distinction that you are seeking for in your initial video, unless one wishes to say that both the UFO and apostolic testimony are both delusive. But if one does that, then the question that was initially raised is no longer a good one but a disingenuous one. Now, I'm not claiming that you intended this, far from that. Rather, I'm simply stating that if one wishes to hold to a psychological hypothesis to account for the resurrection and the UFO sightings, then this is a separate topic and one that needs to be discussed separately, to what I'm willing to do if desired. Now, with that said, let me give you the justification as to why I hold to the believability of the apostolic testimony versus UFO abductees. Now, the distinction between UFO sightings and the apostolic testimony for me is simply this. The plausibility of opposing theories, given the data and the context of these phenomena, the, the opposing theories for the resurrection are weaker and less plausible than the UFO abduction reports. Well, duh, you might say you're a Christian, obviously you believe that. The question is why do you think opposing theories for the UFO abductions are more persuasive, can't talk, than the opposing theories for the resurrection? I personally argue this as follows. Based off the historical evidence that is agreed upon by both the overtly skeptical and non-skeptical historians, opposing theories fail to account for what we know about the resurrection, while this is not the case for UFO abductions. Case in point. Let me expound. Let's assume for the sake of argument that the New Testament is not entirely credible historically and that we must use the often familiar criteria of historical authenticity to separate what is and what is not history in the New Testament. Now in doing this and using non-biblical historical data in addition, we can develop five minimal facts that are agreed upon. Those are, one, Jesus was killed by crucifixion. You don't need the Bible for that. Two, the disciples genuinely believed that Jesus appeared to them. Now, whether they were right or not is not the question. The question is they believed it. Three, two overtly skeptical eyewitnesses converted to Christianity based off these alleged appearances, that being Paul and James. Four, the disciples had some sort of experience when they encountered the resurrected Jesus alleged by those eyewitnesses. And five, the tomb was found empty. Now, moreover, if we take the religio-historical context of Jesus of Nazareth's, Nazareth's claims of divinity and his sayings, etc., we can add to our enrichment of the evidence pool. Now, from this, we can infer several hypotheses that account for the five facts of the resurrection being one of the major contributors to it. Now, if we compare that to UFO sightings and abductions, 
we don't get the same story. For example, and for starters, there's a strong scientific there is strong scientific evidence that the chances for life existing elsewhere are extremely unlikely. One could justify this via the theological argument or the fine-tuning argument, in addition to the current scientific data that we have via probes and satellites, etc. And so we have one possible defeater for such sightings and encounters, that being the implausibility of life elsewhere. Now please note here before I go on and note what I'm saying, I'm questioning the appeal to UFOs as a hypothesis for the experience these people are having, not the actual experience. These people no doubt are experiencing something, but their interpretation of the UFO is questionable in my mind. Moreover, other plausible theories abound to account for the phenomena in question, for example, um, you can think of weather balloons, military aircraft, poor reporting techniques, etc. So that in a nutshell, is why I hold to the authenticity of the apostolic testimony over UFO sightings, and vicariously why I think that those who state a distinction between dying for an ideal and dying for what you experience is a valid counter-argument to your original video. So concisely, this is how I differentiate between the claims of the apostolic testimony and UFO sightings. UFO sightings. Given the historical evidence, i.e. the five minimal facts that we have, opposing theories fail to account for these and what we know about the resurrection, while this is not the case for UFO abductions. While people who claim to experience some sort of visual encounter with UFOs most definitely experience something, the inference to a UFO is dubious, and I don't think that's the case for the resurrection given, again, the five facts and the his religio-historical context. Hope that helps. That is my distinction and that's my method of justification. Let me know what you think. Peace.